Hi everybody, thank you for coming. Um, I'm Gabe. Uh, some of you might know me, some of you might not. I'm the president of Savvy Panda. I've um, been using Joomla, I guess, shortly since after 1.0 came out. Um, been doing Savvy Panda for about 11 years. I'm also the uh, editor of the business section on the JCM, or Joomla Community Magazine. Uh, Co-founder with Victor Drover of uh, the Joomla Milwaukee Users Group and JDay Midwest. Um, Today, uh, I, in my free time, this is some of the stuff I like to do. I love combat sports, uh, wrestling, jujitsu, judo. I like getting thrown and choked and submitted, but it's fun. <laughs> this is Hans and Franz. This is our chief security officers at Savvy Panda, and uh, I, I love spoiling them. So those are my guys, and of course, love traveling too. This is Sharm el Sheikh, Egypt. Um, so Savvy Panda, our, kind of our two specialties are uh, Joomla web design and development and inbound marketing. Uh, we're based in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. We have clients everywhere from small businesses to Fortune 100 companies. Uh, for this presentation, feel free to use this Twitter information if you guys feel like commenting. Uh, some key takeaways from the presentation today. We're going to learn what microdata is, why it's important, um, how to use microdata, how it affects search engine rankings, uh, Google's supported data types of microdata, and, and of course, uh, what's the future for microdata? Um, a lot of people just came in. So just a quick show of hands, who knows what microdata is already? It has experience, so about half the room. Some don't, okay. Um, so briefly, just a little bit about m what microdata is. Have you, who's seen this in search engines when you search and you get pictures or ratings or anything like that? Yeah, just about everybody. So that's, that's really microdata. And it's just a, a specification within HTML5. Um, there's really two vocabularies that you can use. You can use kind of a, a standardized vocabulary or you can make your own vocabulary within kind of the semantic data. So, but why it's, I guess, important in, to mark it up is uh, it makes your data much more readable to machines. So not only will data on your site be able to be just read, it'll be able to be interpreted by machines, which uh, gives intelligence to your data, essentially. Uh, so microdata should not be confused with uh, microformats or RF or RDFA. Uh, you can ignore that H card. That shouldn't be up there. It's a microformat. But uh, so those are two different formats, and I'll be talking about those a little bit more. If any of you guys see that lightning talk uh, on HTML5, he he actually went over I think uh, in each group. That's a microformat. <laughs> so those are a little different. And why there's kind of controversy is because there's these kind of three competing formats, much similar to how HD DVD or Blu-ray was, or VHS and Beta, Betamax, and um, so of the three formats, microdata uh, really was found to be the most, um, I guess, the best one of the three at the current time, and so. Uh, HTML5 chose to, um, or I shouldn't say HTML5, Google, Bing, and Yahoo got together and uh, chose that they wanted to push forward mostly with microdata uh, over the other two. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a little bit. Uh, so why would you use microdata now? Primarily the biggest use for microdata in its current form is really search engines. 
uh, it's been shown that uh, listings on search engines with microdata have a 30% higher conversion rate. And it's pretty much common sense because you have something that calls more attention to your listing. You have a listing, you have extra data. You may take up double the height in a listing. So even if you're not ranking as high in your placement ranking, you may rank a little lower, but you might stick out a lot more. Um, you, might not, uh, you might not see search engine ranking results now because uh, Google or any of the search, I know Google, I don't know about the other search engines, don't take into effect microdata whatsoever into their rankings currently. But since they're a big part of the movement, I think it's pretty obvious in the future that it will have some sort of effect. Um, you can technically use it now. You know, you could build a, an application that would use the semantics of it. But since it's not widely adopted yet, um, unless you're just using it for internal use, I think the power goes beyond farther in the future when it's more widely adopted. Uh, so I'd mentioned schema dot, or I, sh I had mentioned Google, Bing, and Yahoo kind of got together, and they put together schema.org. And schema.org is essentially a standard list of vocabulary to use within your semantics. Because just because you have the ability to use semantics, if everybody's using different vocabulary, um, it doesn't necessarily make much sense because not everybody's on the same page necessarily. So if you go to schema.org, this is essentially what you'll see. Um, they have all the different data types that have been defined, and they're continuing to define more. This is just a little bit of uh, some of the items that are kind of on here right now. But like I said, you don't have to use the standard vocabulary. You can use your own vocabulary, and that comes in powerful if uh, you know, you have five websites that you want to aggregate your own personal data from, you can give them your own vocabulary and use that for your own purposes. So let's look in an example. You know, this is standard HTML per se, or some standard language. And then with some uh, markup, this is more what you'll look like. Um, this is a, a restaurant example. The, you can see the item scope and the item type. Those are the two kind of have-to-haves. And then you have your item property. Um, here you have your rating value, which you're manually assigning it, but you stick some PHP code in there or whatever, I'm sure, to actually give what number you want. And you can see your address. And it's, it's very human readable. That's what one of the downsides of uh, the the RFDA or RDFA was is that it's not very easy to use. It's not very human readable. It's harder to use. So that was one of its downfalls. And if we looked at what that looks like, uh, that's what your listing is going to look like um, in the end. And that's the human readable format. Now this is this is actually. Uh, Google's rich snippet tool, and this is how you can actually test your microdata formats. Um, if you just search for Google rich snippet tool, this will come up. You can either test the link or you can just stick in some code and it'll give you all the data on there. Uh, so let's look at a couple other examples. Uh, recipes again, you know, pretty standard item scope, item type, and then um, you have your properties. You can see you can actually nest properties within there as well. And um, it's pretty straightforward. And, you know, that's what a recipe could look like. You have your rating, an image, tells you total cook time, uh, how many reviews it has. Kind of same thing for an event. In events, you have some pretty cool stuff you can do. So if we look at an event, you can have, you know, multiple days, who the artists are, where it is. Uh, so it, it's, it's pretty powerful stuff. Mm, too many examples. Product, reviews, price, whether it's in stock. So authorship. Um, this one's a little bit different. Um, if you're an author and you want to get your picture there, 
right now it's not just a matter of sticking a picture or a tag in there. You either have to have a Google verified email or you have to have a G Plus account. And you don't actually link to an image, you actually have to link to that email account with Google or that Google Plus account if you want your picture to show up uh, as an author. Um, so Google's bringing you in a little bit more into their universe, I guess, by forcing you to do that. Uh, oh, I guess I brought this up a little too early. This is our uh, rich snippet tool example, uh, just the site where you can go and, and test it out. Uh, even though schema.org has like a ton of stuff on there, Google's only supporting right now a handful of things. Reviews, people, products, businesses and organizations, recipes, events, music, uh, some support for video is all they currently affect. And of course, like we mentioned now, it has no effect on search engine rankings as it is, but they're continuing to add more. Uh, I think from when I started this presentation to actually uh, when I finished it a few days ago, they had actually added a few more to this list. It's a small list, so it's obviously not rapidly growing, but they're slowly uh, supporting it. Uh, you can't, oh, sorry, go ahead. Does a recipe have to be a procedure for creating food? Mm-hmm. You can make it whatever you want. I think it's intended for food. Sure. So you probably wouldn't want to uh, use it for that purpose. Technically, you could market that way, but I think it's more intended for food. You know, there could be another snippet. I haven't seen one, I don't think, yet for like more of how to. Uh, I could definitely see that, though, in the future. So. Adopted. Adopted. Uh, you could then change just the outer label from recipe to how to. Yeah, I mean, this vocabulary, none of it is set in place. You can put whatever vocabulary you want in there, and it's going to accept it. So if you want to make a how to semantic, uh, some microdata, you're free to do that. It's just that it's not going to be, it may not necessarily be adopted by Google which may not show up in a search engine, but for your own purposes on your site, you know, you could use it for that and, it, and you could show it up on your site that way based on those semantics. So it's, uh, yeah, you very well could do that. Uh, so uh, with microdata, it's not like search engines. Uh, it's, it's not automatically just taken and read by Google. You have to go in under Webmaster Tools. You have to manually submit for your site to be reviewed by Google uh, in order to accept your microdata as it is right now. A few Joomla microdata tools. Uh, there's really not much out there right now. There's uh, uh, some breadcrumbs for navigation, uh, just a module. And then this is really an important one, the uh, J4 schema. This is just an editor plugin that will allow you to choose your tags. It has all everything you need in there. So all the available um, all the available data types, you can choose your data type, each of the properties, and insert your microdata without having to know it by hand. So it's just a little helpful additional item. Um, now, this, this I'd like to kind of lead more of a discussion about. Uh, what's the future of microdata? Because it's, it's so young that you really don't know what the power is in the future. I think there's some obvious areas. Um, you know, content aggregation is obviously a big one. Um, you have intranets, which you could use very structured data for. Statistical analysis within companies for data. Uh, obviously, better SERP results. Uh, how do you guys feel? Microdata could be used. Thank you for really like blog posts, right? We do all the related stuff like that for blog posts. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. So if I understand correctly, that's not currently supported, but you can maybe mark it up as a recipe and get it within that. Yeah. The blog posts, I think, is not yes officially supported yet. 
I don't know why, but because uh, that's something we've wanted it for. for the, the, we're tr that's how we're kind of getting around it using, I forget which property, because we're trying to tie in images to all our blog posts. But that's already supported. Yep.